Hello and welcome to our Thanksgiving week in our fourth grade classroom. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. I'm coming to you from Monday, November 22nd, 2021. And I want to get started by giving you a short recap of my weekend and some of the things that I ended up doing. I haven't done a weekend recap in a while because not a lot of exciting things have been happening. But on Saturday, I actually went with my brother to Runner's Depot to pick up our race packets for the Flanagan's Rock rib run it is a 10k race and we got our book bags with our bib numbers and everything ready to go for the race my brother ended up getting fitted for running shoes so that he was ready to go and then after that we went to Panera to have a nice lunch followed by going to Walgreens to grab a couple of candies and then going to see Ghostbusters in the movie theater I loved it. It gave me a lot of childhood nostalgia for the original Ghostbusters and you have to go see it. My recommendation, if you like the original Ghostbusters, you have to go see this new one. It was great. And then of course we are brought to Sunday, which Sunday being yesterday was race day. We got up very early in the morning. I got up at 4.30, left my house at five to go pick up my brother. We got at the venue for the race around 5.30 something or 40 something. We parked and then it was raining. And my brother wasn't sure if he was going to participate because of the rain, but I was gonna go anyway. But the good thing is my brother did decide to do it. And yes, we got soaked and wet. I couldn't really film after we had started the race because it was raining a lot and I didn't want my phone to get wet. But around mile marker four, it cleared up. So I was able to grab a little clip of that and continue down. It was a very long way, 6.2 miles, my friends. That's what 10 kilometers is. By in the middle of like the fourth mile, it started to rain again. I had to put my phone away. But then I got a clip for mile five, which it had cleared up. By the time we made it close to the mile six marker, by the way, we were last. And it is, it's okay because the way that I'm doing these races now is not like to finish fast, it's just to be able to accomplish it because I'm trying to get back into the racing habit that I used to be in. So remember in September, I did my 5K and I walked the whole way because of my foot injury. And this time around, I also walked the entire 10 kilometers because my brother wasn't really prepared to run and I didn't want to leave him. So I just hung out with him and we stuck it through and we finished and it was just beautiful to be able to cross that finish line and get our finishing medal, which I am wearing right now. So it's really awesome to be able to have that accomplishment and to have been able to do it with my brother. After the race, we were treated with some ribs. Flanagan's ribs are one of the best ribs that I have ever eaten in the world, in my life, my opinion. So we got to enjoy some of that, then went to my brother's place. I changed my clothes because I was soaked and then took a nice nap. And I slept for most of the day because I needed it. So that brings us to today. Our day started with me reading Balloons Over Broadway. So I wanna give you a glimpse of that and the little activity that the students will work on tomorrow. So this is the story right here. I have featured it in previous vlogs. It is by Melissa Sweet, and it basically goes over the story of Tony Sarg, who was the person behind the original Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So this is a great, beautiful story, and there he is right there. So once we read the story and the students were able to learn more about the Thanksgiving Day Parade and its roots, we took it to the internet. We went to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade website. I'll link it down below. It is macy's.com slash social slash parade. And basically, as you scroll through, check it out how cool this is. Pokemon is actually celebrating their 25th anniversary, which is why they have a new balloon featuring Pikachu with Eevee. 
And Grogu is going to be featured this year. So these are some of the new balloons. And Ada Twist Scientist, which I'm so excited about. This little bear balloon right here is new, and it's in memory of Tony Sarg himself. And Ronald McDonald has a new design showing a heart, trying to give kindness to everyone for all the things we have been going through. So if you just scroll through, it gives you the countdown and it also gives you the balloon lineup. So we spent some time looking at the balloon lineup and learning more about each balloon. So if you click on it, you're able to see the different parts of the parade. So the balloons, the balloon sickles, the floats, the performers, marching bands, clowns, performance groups, etc. So check it out. So here's the Ada Twist Scientist, which in the balloon lineup, she's supposed to be one of the first balloons that shows up. So it gives you different information about the balloon and also some fun facts per balloon. So we spent some time doing this. And of course, we went through each of these parts of the parade so that students learn more about it. But one of the things I do wanna show you as I'm going back a little bit over here um, to the main page is you can just continue. You can see the route. You can look at all the different information about the Parade, Parade 101. So if you go in here to Parade 101, there are different activities that you can see over here. They have videos. They also have printables that you can have the students work on. So they have a word search, coloring page, a little happy Thanksgiving card, and other kinds of activities that you can print for your students. So this is really cool. I highly recommend this if you want the students to learn a little bit more about how the balloons are designed. Tomorrow, I'm gonna show the students this video on balloon design basics because they're going to work on an activity that I have done in previous years that goes along with this book. And this is a template for the activity right here. So on here, the students are going to design their balloon and then they're gonna write a little letter to Macy's telling them about their balloon and why it should be included in a future parade. And then in math, we ended up going over our factor turkeys, which is something that I've done in the past. So the students receive a template with feathers. They have a turkey on the template and on the turkey's belly is a number that I wrote. And then the students have to go ahead and use the feathers to find the factors of that number and then decorate the turkey, cut out the feathers and glue the feathers to the back of the turkey. So this is my template. I got the number 56 and I found the factors of 56. So I knew that I was gonna need more feathers. So not just five, I needed three more for a total of eight factors for the number 56. So now I'm starting to design my turkey. I'm gonna color it. I'm gonna cut out the feathers and glue it to the sides of the turkey. Because I have an even number, I can easily put four feathers on one side and four feathers on the other. And I still have a few students that need to finish this activity, but I have a couple that finished. So let me show you some glimpses of their turkeys. So here is one turkey with the number 18. And I see that the student named this turkey Thanos. So I guess these must be the infinity feathers. Check out this turkey and how this person arranged their feathers. Here's another colorful turkey. Here's another turkey. And here's another turkey. So those are the few turkeys that the students were able to finish. The rest of the students have to finish theirs. And that's basically most of the highlights that I have for today. And I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning. It is our last day this week with our students. This morning, I'm getting ready to welcome the kids. I also just looked at my last reflex math report for our reflex math challenge that started on October 25th and yesterday. So I can see who were the first, second, and third place winners. And I have my answers. So I'll get to announce it this morning when the students are in the classroom. So right now I'm going to get those things ready to go. I need to put the little baggies together with the prizes. And there's just one prize that I have to order today because I didn't know who was gonna be the third place winner. So that person will tell me what book they would like for me to purchase on Amazon and I'll get that for them. So I had already showed this in my last vlog. This is the Amazon Kindle Fire tablet, the seven inch one. So this was ready to go with a little note saying, congratulations on first place. There's no name on there. 
because we didn't know until today. And here is a second place prize, which is a $25 Visa gift card. And along with these, they're also getting some reflex math, like little goodies that I'm gonna put in little gift bags. One of my students asked for a squishy from Dollar Tree, and this is the one that I got. So I'm just gonna put it here on her desk so she can see it when she comes in. Another student asked for Pop Rocks for her favorite candy which she spun in the wheel, so I got her three little packs ready to go. And another student asked for a Hershey's milk chocolate bar. So here are some of the little things that I got for the prize bag. So this will be like little ribbons that I'm going to put in the gift bag because I just got plain white gift bags, as you can see right here. And I ended up just getting tissue paper to fill it in and colorful ribbon to decorate the bag. And I also got some little mini gift bags where I'm gonna put the Reflex Math little gifts, which are right here, as you can see. They have lanyards, wristbands, a little like keychain that says Math Ninja, and a light up necklace that says get the green light with Reflex. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put these together and I'll check in back with you later. It's about 1.40 right now, the students are in music, and I wanted to give you an update on what we've done. So this morning, we went ahead and read a new book called Thankful, and this is what it looks like. It is by Elaine Vickers and illustrated by Samantha Cotterell, and it's basically about a little girl that creates little paper chains about things that she is thankful for. So... It starts by saying, every year when the first snow falls, we make thankful chains to last us through December. It is hard to think of all the things to be thankful for in a whole year, so I start right in my room. So there she is with colorful paper, creating her little thankful chains, and she starts listing different things that she is thankful for. It was a beautiful story. I highly recommend it. I'll link it down below. You could definitely do it, not just this week, any day, in my opinion. So as soon as we read that, I went ahead and I cut out paper strips to give to the students. Every student received nine paper strips. And on those paper strips, they were able to write the different things that they were thankful for. So as they were writing it, I went ahead and started going around the room and creating a paper chain. But I can't wait to show you this very, very long, thankful paper chain. Some students put theirs together so that it formed their own individual paper chain that they take home. And the rest of our thankful paper chains are over here. They are so long that they go through the floor and they go on top of here. So it starts there and I put it up to the top, kind of made it drop a little bit here and then all the way went down but those are all the things that the students are thankful for and we put them together in our classroom paper chain beautiful such a great idea and the students really love doing this and another thing that i did i had recently not recently recently but a couple weeks ago i bought this thankful paper tree from target i saw it and i grabbed it and then I gave the students one leaf and on that leaf they wrote one thing or a couple of things that they were thankful for and then they added it to our little thankful tree. So this is the packet right here and these are the little directions for it and this is our completed paper tree and the students just went around. I called them individually and they chose a branch to put their leaf in. So I'm just turning it around so that you can see. In hindsight, I see that they could also have put something on the back of the leaves, but I didn't think about it as we were doing it. But in it all, it became really, really great for the students to have this opportunity to show some gratitude. And then of course the students had an opportunity to start working on their balloon design for the Balloons Over Broadway activity where they get to design a balloon that they would like to see featured in a future Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. To prepare the students for that, I just went ahead and took them back to the Macy's website that I showed you yesterday. And I showed them this video on how 
these designers are designing a balloon and how they need to make sure they have enough space for the helium and that they needed to also make sure they drew out their tethers and then of course they gave a little background so this was to help the students in their designs of their own balloons as well as writing their short letter to macy's so here's an example of one of the balloon creations so this is a cat and here is a dolphin a butterfly a froggy balloon hello kitty an owl raccoon mario kirby here's a panda we have some simpsons fans <laughs> i love the background in this one too and some ghostbusters fans as well here's the marshmallow man the stay puff marshmallow man and i still have some others that haven't finished yet so i'm planning on monday of next week to give them time during do now to go ahead and finish designing their balloons along with their letter so yeah that is what we have done so far oh the other thing the students were finishing their factor turkeys and because a lot of these activities were taking some time we didn't get to do the color by math that i planned for today which i did put in the agenda which i should show you in a minute but i did want to give you a glimpse of the turkeys that were finished by the students some of the turkeys still need to get done but most of them are done so let's take a look And that's pretty much what we've done today so far and let me show you the agenda so here is our agenda for today and i believe that we have completed almost everything on this agenda except for the color by number and right now the students are in music so when they come back we'll do some science all right i'll give you an update on that at the end of the day and then i have to get ready after school to go to orange theory to complete my workout for today and relax until i come back to school tomorrow for my teacher planning day because i do have a lot to accomplish i know i'm not going to get through everything so i should just make myself like a list of three big things i want accomplished and shoot for that it's the end of the day and we wrapped up our day like i mentioned doing the doodle notes on matter and then we watch a brain pop video on matter and i had different students come to the board to answer the quiz questions from the video so these are the doodle notes and i'll be sure to link them down below so here they are we started by just taking notes on what solids liquids and gases are the most common states of matter and so you can see where they filled in the blanks so that they understood the properties of each state of matter the particles and examples of each state after that we went ahead and we went into how we classify the properties of matter so we looked at mass the physical state whether it's magnetic, the conductivity, solubility, and relative density. So this was a nice review, and next week we'll continue on with matter and the properties of matter. And tomorrow I'm coming in for my teacher planning day. I could stay home. In all honesty, I could. But what am I going to do at home? I'm probably going to be in bed till probably 2 p.m. And instead, I'd rather just be in my classroom and do some work and yes i mean it when i say i'll probably stay in bed till 2 p.m i'll wake up have breakfast watch some tv till 2 and then try to do something productive with my life but i am choosing to come to school be productive get a lot of stuff done hopefully and we'll see how it goes so until tomorrow good morning it is now wednesday i'm coming to you right at the beginning of the day it is what is it 8 40 something now i came in like at 8 10 8.44. I came in at 8.10, but as I was coming in, I had to carry a bookshelf that I had in storage into my room because if you may recall, or I don't know if I ever showed you, this is my paper tray organization where students turn in their work, and right now it's a royal mess up here because these two fell. Obviously, the students line up over here. Sometimes they have their book bags and accidentally knock it over. So I brought this bookshelf because in the past it used to be over here so i need to move these old wonders books out and ask the principal what we're going to do with them because i believe they go to some kind of storage so this bookshelf will go there and i can then put these on top of that and hopefully they're out of the way so that they don't get knocked down i also have to put these construction paper things away that was from yesterday when i was trying to find construction paper for the thankful chain which i i don't know if i showed you i kind of rearranged it so that it wasn't dragging on the floor so i looped it and i put it inside of the bins here so that's kind of neat i also want to organize this and get rid of this 
that is extra copy paper so I can just put it away. But yeah, after I brought up the bookshelf, the security guard helped me bring it up. I went back to my car because I had a couple of other things that I got out of storage that I hadn't brought back into the classroom yet. And I know I, I do have a lot of stuff in my classroom, so I have to go through it. A lot of it is books that I need to put away in the library, the classroom library. And I have an idea of making a small little flexible seating arrangement. Hopefully it'll work, we'll see. So I brought back my floor seats and my wobble cushions. So here's the cart, fully stacked. I didn't wanna make double trips, so I kinda make sure everything fits. So these two crates down here have some books and some dry erase boards. These are the shelves for that bookshelf. These are the legs for the Ikea table that I'm gonna use for the flexible seating option. Then I have these little stools and my wobble cushions are in here. Let me go around. So here are the wobble cushions. So these are all from Lakeshore, the wobble cushions and the floor seats. And these are other things that I had, you can tell the mess over there that I need to take care of today. But these are other things that I had as decorations and my basketball hoop, which if it doesn't fit up there, I may put back here where it was, and you can tell there's other stuff that I need to take care of over there. The first thing I wanna to do today is plan for next week, which is a full five-day school week, make copies, have everything ready to go, and then I'm gonna start on organization. I'm gonna start by first putting all these books in the shelves right here, Put the bins away somewhere i don't know i haven't figured out what to do with the bins once i use them so we'll see and then do some other organization like the kidney table the back cabinets it's a lot i don't think i'm gonna do all of it but if i can at least hit a dent in three different spaces in my classroom i'll be happy so that is the goal for today and we'll see how it goes but right now i'm feeling a little lightheaded so i'm gonna eat something take my medicine and I get started with some planning. So I'll be working from my desk right now and we'll see what progress we make as the day progresses. It's now been a couple of hours since I last left you and I have to say, I always overestimate how long a teacher planning day is and how much I can actually accomplish because it's time to go. It is 2.35, the building is closing at three. The principal came on saying that we could leave at 12, but I was still in the middle of planning for next week. And I just have to say that sucked my time. <laughs> I started planning and I thought I was gonna do it quick, but then I started getting ideas. Oh, maybe I could do this, maybe I could do that. Before you know it, I ended up creating two new Jamboard templates. So I'll show you that really quickly for next week for reading. And uh, yeah, that's where most of my time went. So I wasn't able to accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish, let alone make copies, I am going to put my copy box in my mailbox, which is in the same room where the copy machine is so that when I come in on Monday morning, I can quickly just jump in and start making copies for the week, which is not a lot, but I need to at least get the morning do now work done and the homework assignments all copied and ready to go. <sighs> but... I did unload my car that I showed you earlier. One of my students was here in school today because her mom works in the office, so she came up and she actually helped me fill up one of the bookshelves and then I just finished doing the rest. I organized the student's desk, I changed the date, I put the agenda for next week, but you know, I can't be too hard on myself because I did accomplish something, so. The date is ready to go, November 29th. The agenda is on the board for Monday. As you can see, we have very, very full bookshelves. Like a lot of these shelves are super tight with books. Some of them are not as tight, but yeah, tons of books. And the students are gonna start using these for sure. I've been waiting to put more books out and figuring out a system. So I think now we're getting ready to have the students start getting a book to read from our classroom library, but that's pretty great. I also put this bookshelf here with the work that is our Turnitin bin, like I said. Before I leave, I'm gonna add the rest of the homework assignments. These are homework assignments that are done every week anyway, and what I do is with the weekly math blog, I just change the week. So next week, they're gonna do week 15, and then I'll add the practice book pages that they're gonna do, and I'll add the vocabulary packet that they're gonna do next week. But this is pretty good. I put our pencil sharpener here, and haven't decided how I'm gonna use these shelves yet, but at least it's extra storage for me. And now I have all of these empty crates where the books were, which I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I'll probably eventually take them home to organize my home storage. 
but that is what we're dealing with right now. So I wasn't able to clear this up. I ended up putting the floor seats up here. So we'll see how that goes. This table is here for now. Not sure when I want to put it. I almost want to get rid of these drawers by putting the things that are inside away and getting rid of things that I don't really need so that I can then put this table up against the wall and put some floor seats around it as an option for flexible seating. And that's what I was able to accomplish. I realized that yesterday I said I was gonna come up with three things to do for today and I really didn't coming into today. But if you really wanna think about it, I plan for all of next week, reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. I went ahead and put those books away in the bookshelves with the help of my student. I put the bookshelf by the door with the new Turnitin bin and I organized that Turnitin bin because the papers had fallen before and I unloaded the cart. I guess that's my extra fourth, <laughs> something like that. I, I guess I need to look at the positive and not be so hard of myself. I do have a lot of stuff that I still need to do, but in all reality, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, today's a teacher planning day, the school building is closing in less than 20 minutes. Let me show you these templates that I created that took my time. First and foremost, I created our new reading response questions sheet. These questions I don't write myself. They actually come from our district. I just retyped them on the sheet. Then I also created the annotated handout or reading sheet for our anchor text, which we're going to read on Tuesday. So these boxes, if you have seen some of my other videos, that's where they put the post-its on top to answer the question that it's in that box. So these go over all the skills that we're currently working with. And this is a new simple reading annotations template that I created for Jamboard. On Monday, after we do a reread of the shared read, I'm gonna have students add their annotations here. And these are the different symbols for annotations that I have used with my students before. So this is plus, learn something new, something you can visualize, something exciting or shocking or surprising, something they liked or love, a question they have and a connection. So this was how I created it in PowerPoint. This is the Jamboard itself so that students can just click on these sticky notes right here choose a color, type their sticky notes, and put it on there. I have a wireless keyboard that I can have my students use, or I can just ask them to share their annotations, and we can add them here. So once I created this in PowerPoint, I just easily went to set background. I went over here for image, and I browse so that I can find the image where I saved it on my computer. The other thing that really took my time was this beautiful story arc. I actually ended up drawing the little roller coaster cards, the arc, I drew everything. And the little person is one of the icons that comes with Microsoft PowerPoint. So I created it and I used the same colors as the sticky notes in Jamboard. And I went ahead and I labeled it, but this is just the background because on Jamboard, it looks like this. I added sticky notes to explain each part. So I know that this is exposition, but I'm gonna be showing the vocabulary video on this which is this video right here on plot elements. And if I click on it, I just wanna show you. I'm gonna zoom through so that you can see how they show it. We'll back up a little. So if you notice, they have introduction, rising action, climax, filling action, and conclusion. So I wanted to kind of use the same wording that the vocabulary video uses, but I will let them know that this is also called exposition. So with the exposition, we're looking at the setting, who the characters are, what does the main character need or want, and the problem. The rising action is how the problem starts to get worse. The climax is the turning point. It's also where the change agent is introduced. It's the most exciting or suspenseful moment when the problem is at its worst. Then we have the falling action, which is when the problem starts to get better, and the conclusion, which is also known as the resolution, which is how the problem is solved. So what I'm planning to do is as we are doing a rereading of the anchor text on Wednesday, I will have the students tell me the information and we can add it so we can change the stickies. Whatever directions are here, we can actually change it to the story that we are reading at that moment. So this was really cute and I actually like how it came out. And that, my friends, is how I spent today's planning day and how I'm ending this week. This was week 14 of the school year. And very, very short week, only two days with the students, and then today planning day, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Friday is Thanksgiving recess, so the school is also closed, so I won't be with students until next week, Monday. So, 
I will see you then. Next week I start Vlogmas, so that'll be really interesting. <laughs> By the way, I am planning to do one of my Vlogmas days as a Q&A. I have never done a Q&A in all of my years on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for four years now. So if you have a question you would like to ask me, go ahead and leave it in a comment down below. I'm also going to create an Instagram post about it, probably an Insta story and a community post here on YouTube so people can drop their questions and I can do a Q&A. And let's see how I section the Q&A. Maybe we'll have different categories for questions. All right, so thank you for coming along with me for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.